Hello, everybody. Welcome to Speculative Work. I'm James Aaron. I'm a science fiction writer, and this podcast is an author diary of my work, goals, fumbles, and lessons. So hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I did or that I do. Uh, This week, I am looking forward to 2019, talking about goals, um, some things I hope to accomplish, and some things that are kind of happening whether I want them to or not. So... (laughs) Uh, it's a podcast that I hope to look back on in the future and be able to compare some things and we'll see how the year turned out. Um, I'm kind of dealing with the frog in my throat, so I apologize if I have to clear my throat a couple times or I may take a drink of coffee, as I will do right now. That was not too loud. So uh, we will push ahead. I'm trying a new recording uh, medium this time around. I've been going back and forth. I think I had mentioned in an earlier podcast that I started using YouTube Live and had a podcast that stopped recording in the middle, and that was pretty frustrating to me. So I have not been doing that. Um, So I'm not doing the live video, but I am uploading the podcast to YouTube um, once it's published, so it's still ending up on YouTube. I'm just going to do other video things um, that I guess get my face onto YouTube. (laughs) Um, But for for now, I wanted to go back to, like, what is the core of this? It's a podcast. It's a diary. It's, you know, first for me, but also for anyone else who might be... um, you know, earlier in their career, or maybe even a little earlier than, than I am. And it's not necessarily meant to be a, a video format. But so I've tried a couple different ways to record. And right now I'm using a Tascam DR05, which is an audio recorder that records in stereo. I actually got it to do like live music stuff. Um, but I had recorded a couple other things with a little Sony. Um, digital recorder that I had and I'm finding that this is just much cleaner and for most things you know audio wise it's easier if you've got a clean input to start with and because I'm not recording in you know a muffled silenced room or a sound booth or anything so far this is sounding pretty good but I'm going to do some more uh, experimentation with how I can you know make the podcast sound better Um, so we'll see how that goes for now it's pretty easy although it's kind of like bulky and awkward to carry around, Um, but oh well, we'll deal with that. So first, uh, let's have some updates. Um, Since last week, again, this has been a holiday week. I have been off from work, although with my job, I still do plenty of things while I'm not physically um, at work. So though, you know, I answer the phone, I answer email, um, respond to things, that sort of deal. Uh, It hasn't been hugely demanding, but it has been ongoing. I have been struggling to get writing done and really only got good words down three days out of last week. Um, the rest of the time was a lot of, you know, Christmas day, family stuff, people coming over, um, baby stuff. And it just wasn't quite as productive as I hoped it would be. Uh, according to my writing plan, I'm, you know, only about 75% of where I would like to be. But I think on the whole, I'm, I'm, in a good place with uh, the book and will at least be, you know, we have deadlines. They're always a little bit flexible based on the overall, you know, process of what's coming out for a given week or month or, you know, series of months. And, and these books were going to be even a little bit different because I'm turning them in like much farther ahead than when they're going to be coming out. Um, And because we're co-writing more than we had before, um, it all kind of depends on, um, Michael Cooper's schedule as well. So we'll see, you know, how, how set in stone my deadline is and what I need to finish or not finish. But um, I'm making good progress and I feel pretty good about where I am. So uh, next week I think we'll be, um, we'll be better. I mean, one of the things I'm really realizing is that it's just really tough to write um, in the house. And whereas I used to have, you know, like I've said before, I could get up pretty reliably early and just power through. That doesn't work. Like today... I got up at five, um, but really only had about an hour and a half and then the baby woke up. And so I took the baby and, um, entertained her while my wife got to sleep for a couple hours. And then now I'm getting another break. Um, but that's while we're trying to get the baby down for, for a nap. So it's not really, you know, if both of us are here, we're definitely trading off back and forth with the baby and I'm getting much better at, 
you know, keeping Word up on my computer at all times so I don't come back to the computer and get distracted and waste time um, with Facebook or whatever. And I've even added a, uh, a little sign to my, my monitor that says open Word and write first, um, which kind of gets into something that uh, I have been working on this last week or reading, which is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I heard this book mentioned in a podcast uh, by Jay Thorne and Rachel Heron. And he's, Jay described this book as um, the, one of the best, uh, I think, best written nonfiction books that he had ever read. And um, he's right. Like, this book is on point. Um, it really jumps right into the subject. It's well-researched. It gives you the background on all the various ideas that um, he brings up. And... It's all about, you know, good habits, bad habits, what habits you have in your life, and then how to, uh, like, decide that you want to develop a good habit, and then make your kind of make yourself the kind of person that does the things that you want to do. Um, so just in some small changes, and I've already seen some results. I'm not even done with the book yet, and um, I've had some positive impacts from it. But also, my wife and I have been talking about it quite a bit, and she's going to read it. We've also been just talking about it. Um, but we're seeing how like we can kind of mold our environment to be, uh, to support the things that we want to do. So that's been, that's been positive. And I've been reading the book out loud to the baby when I'm trying to get her to sleep. And, uh, of course she has no idea what I'm saying, but it gives me an opportunity to read the book, um, and, you know, entertain her at the same time. So that's been a thing that's been happening last week. Um, Another toy that I got for Christmas um, was a camera gimbal, which is, um, it's a Smooth 4 by Jiyun. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, but basically what it is, it's a, a tool that you, you know, basically like a gyroscope, tri a handheld gyroscope that you can put your cell phone into and use it to take video. And I had been wanting something I could, you know, use for video, um, you know, videos like this, I'm going to do readings, things like that. I could also use it for home videos, which would be fun. Um, but I've been doing a lot of experimenting with that. And while I haven't figured out the best way to use it for personal videos, you know, like this podcast or readings and whatnot, I, I will get that figured out. And so that, that's been a fun thing to experiment with. Um, and that was last week. So it, it feels like it's just flown by. You know, one of the things about doing something consistently like, you know, this podcast is that as soon as, you know, three days go by and okay, it's, it's Wednesday, it's Thursday, it's time to think about what I'm going to talk about for the next podcast. It just feels like barely any time has gone by at all. And it makes you really aware of how much time slides by if you're not being um, intentional about it. And uh, that, that's good. It's also a little scary, you know, because it makes you really aware when you didn't get things done that you wanted to accomplish and how granular you can be about your time. Like, oh, I just let a whole day go. And while for me, like, I certainly accomplished things that day. I cleaned out the gutters. I played with the baby. I took the dog for a walk. Um, still, it's, uh, it's easy to feel uh, like you're not accomplishing the things you want to accomplish. So um, I'm, I'm adjusting to that. And this is definitely something I want to continue doing because it's important to me to um, capture these feelings so that when, you know, I'm staring at Facebook knowing I should be working, I can help remember the fact that last week I felt like I was wasting time on Facebook. This week I'm not going to make the same mistake. So stop that. <laughs> um, okay, that was last week. What I wanted to talk about this week uh, was goals for 2019. And it's funny, when I when I sat down to write out what my goals were, I thought, like, there's not actually that much. Like, I've already mapped out five books I want to write. That's going to take up a lot of time. I've got some uh, professional goals I'd like to accomplish at work. It's not, it felt like it wasn't a lot. And then I started writing the things down. And... I didn't actually count the list, but I want to say there's like 25 things on this list. <laughs> and I, I don't, I'm not going to go through every single one of these things, um, but it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think that, you know, if you sat down and you list out all the things that you want to accomplish, um, even breaking them down into, um, 
you know, categories, you'll find that uh, it can it can be a way to kind of overwhelm yourself, and it can be a form of resistance where you're kind of like, oh, that's I'm not going to do that. That's too much. Um, but that's you know, I, I kind of did the same thing last year. I just wasn't public about it, and I don't want to do that again because I, while I certainly accomplished things last year, I also find myself back in the same place with uh, with some goals that I'm working on, mostly health related, that I don't want to do that anymore. Um, so anyway, let's uh, let's get in the list. And I think the first the first thing that ties everything together for me is a concept um, called you know goal streaks. And that would be, you know, setting, setting a, a, an attainable goal on a daily basis and then starting a streak with the goal. And so when I think about a lot of these goals, um, you know, going from a broad category like health to eating well, reaching weight goals, you know, tracking things about my health, um, all that comes back to start doing it, continue doing it. And if you hit a plateau or you hit a place where you feel like you're not uh, improving, don't dump it all together, because which is kind of what what happened to me, um, at least with a weight goal last year, because I had lost. Uh, so something I that weighs a lot on my mind is that I'm about 80 pounds overweight. If you go by the you know the BMI thing, which is something I've struggled with my whole life. Um, while I don't absolutely want to adhere to BMI, because I have you know you can't really see it, but I got a little bit of muscle on my body, which doesn't fit uh, BMI very well. But um, I am you know. I'm overweight and I'm trying to fix that. I lost uh, about 25 pounds last year and then hit a plateau and was there for about three weeks and and then basically kind of gave up, you know, and just started eating whatever I wanted again. And for me, it's very diet focused. Um, and so that was frustrating. And it's funny because I've been kind of back on the wagon uh, just for, you know, four days now and I already feel positive results and I know that I should stick with it and the thing is I need to remember how I feel right now so that you know when May rolls around I don't backslide again because <laughs> I'm just really tired of repeating the same uh, mistakes when it comes to, to health but maintaining that streak may you know accomplishing a goal marking down that you did it um, you know and there are different ways to accomplish this. There are definitely, there are tons of apps you can use in your phone to help you establish a streak, um, either a health streak, like I'm going to, you know, if you're going to count calories, if you're going to um, follow a low carb diet, or just make healthy choices. Like, did I eat, did I make healthy choices today? Yes, I did. Awesome. That's a streak, you know, and then as you add those things up, that can become a mental block or at least a mental assist that helps you maintain a positive streak. And there are a few different things that I want to establish some streaks with so I can help maintain some consistency. Um, being healthy, you know, doing healthy things, uh, basically just answering that question when it comes to things in my life. Is this something a healthy person would do? That's an example that was in Atomic Habits and it's very basic. <laughs> One of the ideas in Atomic Habits is that if you can just even make a 1% improvement in any given thing, making that over time becomes, you know, 1% becomes 2%, becomes 5%, becomes 10%. And then over time, you greatly improve in ways that you wouldn't have done if you hadn't done anything. And you certainly don't backslide. Um, and also that things are cumulative. You know, they, they add up to the point where change happens and then, then you see the positive change. And for me, it's, I can maintain a streak pretty well for you know four to five months, and then it's it's pushing through a plateau or pushing through feeling like I'm not improving anymore to seeing those um, those cumulative improvements that I, I have struggled with. So same thing with you know making healthy eating choices, exercising, or at least just being active. I'm I'm pretty good about being active, but I could definitely do more um, to writing every day and. I've got, I'll put in the show notes, um, I've got a really nice word tracker that I downloaded off the 20 books to 50K. Someone shared it and it's just a, you know, uses Excel formulas, but it looks pretty and it's a good way to capture output for a given year. And I didn't do that for 2018, although I'm pretty sure I did write over um, 500,000 words, if not 600,000 words, but I would like to capture that in 2019 and see exactly how I did. I don't get as granular as by, you know, 
time to write and time of day and things like that because at least right now in my life that's so um, chaotic with the baby that I don't know that it would really do me a lot of good. But I do want to track my daily word count and I want to establish um, a streak of writing every day, even if it's a um, hundred words, uh, because I've I've been letting my writing time slide and I need to just not do that. <laughs> you know, I I keep sort of waiting for those moments I get into flow state. And when I'm in flow state, I can write, you know, a good 2,000 or 3,000 words. But achieving that has been difficult, especially when the kind of constant distraction I have going on with the with the baby and stuff. So, so streaks around health, streaks around um, writing every day. Um, and then more broadly for writing, um, something I've been thinking about a lot since the 20 Books to 50, 50K conference is what am I doing to develop my individual brand as an author? And I've been incredibly fortunate to be part of Aeon 14, to be writing with uh, Michael Cooper and the other authors that are in Aeon 14. But I also want to kind of pull my own weight when it comes to establishing my own brand so that I'm not just kind of, you know, dragging the coattails of this other um, intellectual property. You know, I something I've been thinking about too is like I, I see sometimes, and I've even felt it myself when I was a young reader, like I there's a barrier to reading a book with a co-author. Some people are all about it. You know, once they get to know you and like you, it's fine. Um, but I think I need to get some of my own work out and establish myself a little bit separately so that I have a strong brand that I bring to Aeon 14. Um, you know, this goes back to my time at Target, but Target was always asking like, you know, how does this improve their brand? And there was a coffee company that I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the coffee company. It was something like Moose Paw Coffee or something. And they were in the midst of, you know, a contract with Target to put uh, cafes in Target stores. And Target was pretty much, you know, 90% down the road with this company and then ended up dumping the contract because they ultimately didn't think that this company would improve their brand. It was an out, you know, outside entity. It wasn't like Target had made this up. And they brought in Starbucks instead. And Starbucks had that strong independent brand. And so when I think of, you know, peer authors that I would like to emulate, you know, Jenny Green that has been working um, with Michael, um, Amy Duboff, who writes as AK Duboff, um, I would, that's where I'd like to, to be so that um, it's not something I can do immediately. I know that, you know, if I continue writing in AM14, I can't do probably more than one individual book a year. But thinking about those cumulative steps, if we even get three years, four years, five years down the road, I would have at least five books that were um, my own thing. And, and that kind of goes to long-term planning. When I think about where I am in my life, in my professional career, where I want to be uh, five years from now as an author, um, I need to start now if I want to make that happen. So that's something I've been, I've been thinking about you know, writing wise and planning out the year. And uh, Michael and I have had some conversations around, you know, as he uh, kind of expands Wooden Pen Press and what it might be in the future, you know, there's space for individual projects that I might have to fit within uh, Wooden Pen. And that's really exciting. Um, so as long as I don't necessarily have time to do marketing the way that I think it should be done, um, I feel really fortunate to be part of a group that can help me with those things. So, you know, basically doing the stuff that a publisher would do. Um, you know, I think even somebody that has a traditional publishing deal now is realizing that uh, you get a certain amount of marketing and then that that's it. After that, you need to do it yourself. And that's really not much different than uh, what indie is doing right now, where indie authors are basically making their own publishing companies. You know, they're just using the really agile knowledge they have about up to the minute information from markets and changing marketing uh, platforms like AMS and or Amazon marketing, Amazon advertising, Facebook, you know, all those various things. Um, they're just moving a lot faster than traditional publishers are. And so eventually we're going to get to parity um, between traditional publishers and uh, indie publishers. You know, it's it's inevitable. So Kevin, one of Kevin Kelly's inevitabilities, um, if you read The Inevitable, which is a, a great book, I recommend it. Um, so thinking about writing 
and reaching financial goals. Um, I didn't really talk about finances in my 2018 recap, but um, I made $24,000 last year. Um, I expect that I may double that next year. So one of the things I've really been focused on is setting up my finances the right way. And I am a, a big believer in reducing, you know, I, I pretty much live below my means anyway. I do pretty well at the day job and I've been very focused on just paying off debt. I had a uh, credit card debt from a company that I had tried to start. Um, and so I've basically been in the process of paying that off since 2013. And one of the really big steps for me is that by April of next year, 2019, I should have all of my debt paid off except for my mortgage. And that, um, I can't really express how excited I am about that, <laughs> but um, that's really just kind of the first step. And, and then after that, like developing a plan on the best way to set up the author business um, to support ongoing writing and continuing to just keep a really tight handle on where I spend money, where we spend money as a family, how we're saving money, what is the best way to um, basically array the funds that we have, either putting those into an LLC that's a separate entity or, you know, what that needs to look like so that, again, five years down the road, when I'm in a place where I can make different decisions about my career, um, will we, you know, we'll very easily have a really good nest egg built up that could sustain us if we're not, you know, maintaining an income. But then also if I potentially reduce work hours, um, you know, we'll be in a good place to do that. I mean, if you maintain a lifestyle that's costing you, you know, a lot, then it just reduces your options when it comes to taking on uh, a job that you might love, but it doesn't pay as well, you know, or that's the thing about writing. It's just, it's not necessarily consistent money. And so how do you establish, um, a lifestyle that supports inconsistent paychecks or, you know, and then again, looking at multiple streams of income, things like that. So I am, that's one of my big financial goals for next year. I'm making decisions about how the business should be uh, configured, just getting that debt paid off. I can't, I can't wait for that. I've been, I've been like planning this since 2013 when I had to make the very difficult decision to leave that business. Um, and that business still exists. And it's even now, like it's in a different place than it was when I was there. And that is kind of painful. It's almost like a divorce to see, you know, your, your ex spouse go off and do other things. Um, but that was the right thing for, for me to do. And I feel really fortunate to be in the place where I am. Um, and the idea of being out from under that debt at this point is just, um, it's an amazing feeling. So, so that's uh, something I'm really focused on. Um, in January, I'm going to play a little game with myself where I'm basically going to try and reduce all of my nitinoid spending that I do. I, I love to buy gadgets. I love to buy dumb little things. And I'm going to try not to do any of that. <laughs> As part of making healthy decisions, I'm going to focus on you know, not eating out. Uh, I have like one lunch meeting a week that I have to do. And beyond that, I can take my own lunches in, make my own food, and I'm gonna do that and see how close I can get to just not spending money like that in January. Um, which again, because I'm so close to that, um, paying off that credit card debt, I I feel like this is gonna be pretty easy <laughs> because I'm I'm within reach of zeros, you know, all across my, uh, my credit report. So I'm excited. Um, what are some other things? So I want to attend at least two events this year that are author events. Um, for AN14, we've got Space Coast Readers Event coming up in Cape Canaveral in June, and I'm really excited about that. I am really excited about taking my family with me. Um, I, I'm excited about them being involved in something that I get to do as an author and just getting to do something cool that also kind of ties into, you know, a business event and figuring out how to do all those right things with, you know, writing off business trips and tracking that. Um, Cause I would love to be able to do more things like that. Like I love to travel, I love to see different parts of the country. So if we can do that within the author business, um, I want to figure out how to do that and, and do it right. Um, we're also looking potentially at doing uh, Oricon or Portland Comic Con um, next year. And so I'll, I'll go to one of those as well. And that's going to be, um, a lot of fun. So I'm excited about that. And I think two, you know, two solid author events will be, will be great. Um, I'm also, I really want to 
do some consulting of some kind for my day job, you know, as par- as part of learning and branching out into multiple streams of income. And so that's something that I'm figuring out how to do. And I was able to have a conversation with my boss about that, um, and he's supportive of it. So that's a goal I have for 2019. Uh, and then in general, like some other just kind of general goals I have, um, I want to use more time blocking because I really want to be you know, better about managing distractions, which I've talked about that. And I want to be better about being present with my family when, when I'm there. So for the hour that I'm working, I'm working and then I'm done. And after that, I'm with my family, you know, and I'm not trying to like type on my laptop while I'm hanging out with, um, you know, with my son or the baby or, or my wife. Um, and just being really clear about those boundaries because that's been, that's been hard and I'm not sure how well I'm going to do with this, but some of the things I've learned out of atomic habits and some other ideas that, um, you know, again, I'm doing the lame thing of depending on January as the time to start this stuff, but um, it's just something I want to take a really a new a new crack at. And you know, admittedly, part of it's just as the baby schedule kind of mellows out and or sort of mellows out <laughs> this this stuff. You just kind of have to roll with the punches, but it's um, it's definitely something I want to do. Uh, I want to do more audio and video stuff in 2019. I'm going to continue this podcast. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of fun watching the downloads grow, so I'm excited about that. And I would encourage anybody to do more audio and video. It's easy. And um, for me, I, I basically just was having a really difficult time blogging. And this is a way to get uh, information out there, share info, build relationships, um, provide value to folks and it's um, it's easier than for me at least than writing essays and going back and you know obsessing over them so I am not scripting right now obviously you can tell from listening to this but for me the purpose is just to get information out there and kind of build relationships um, we'll see how formal I need to get as time goes on um, I want to do more readings I really enjoy doing readings Facebook live is a lot of fun I want to find ways to be more dynamic about it rather than it just being me you know staring into a webcam so that's part of what that gimbal is about I have an audiobook that um, I'm going to I'm going to read it and then basically produce it as an audiobook and use it as a reader magnet because I think the fans would love that but it'll also give me something that I can use individually um, as an offer for folks signing up for the newsletter and also people already on the newsletter. That's about 25,000 words. I'm curious how long it's going to take me to do that and produce it. And then after that, I've got a book um, called The Proteus Bridge, which currently is not planned to be produced as an audiobook. And I think I would like to basically just make a plan and, you know, once a week record like an hour's worth and then see where I get in a year. You know, obviously I think... Based on the size, it'd be about an 11 hour audiobook. Um, so, you know, if that's something I can get done in 10 weeks, that would be amazing. But to see what that looks like, I enjoy reading. I've always wondered about audiobook narration. Um, I don't really consider myself a narrator, but um, I think it would be nice to have that as, as an audio product that could be offered to folks, even if I just put it on the website or, or whatever, or make it for people in the fan group or something. So, I want to experiment with that and um, I'll keep you posted there. I'm going to continue doing a newsletter every two weeks because something I found that the podcast is helping me with is giving me content for the newsletter. Um, So I'm excited to keep doing that. Uh, I've got one coming up for next week that will need to be done. Um, My wife has started a business, and I'm excited to assist her with that. She's crocheting a lot of really cool stuff. Um, And so I'm I'm excited to see where that's going to go for next year. I have to paint my house, <laughs> so I'll keep you posted on how that turns out and how, um, you know, I have these lofty goals of writing my own book, and the timeline for that looks like it would need to be July, August, but that's also prime time to do painting where I live, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and then 20 Books to 50K conference in November. I'm excited to take part in that again. I'm uh enjoying being an admin in the group although I have to kind of take breaks every now and then so I don't get frustrated with like repeat questions continuously and and whatnot but um, that's been that's been fun and I would like to find ways to maybe be more involved in assisting with the indie author community um, as that comes up so we'll see how that turns out 
other things. So I'm gonna get an office. We're making some changes around the house and basically this space that I've been, uh, in the previous videos you saw that I was recording in the baby's nursery and that was a room that we had set up um, for the baby but now we've kind of decided to make some changes in the house and this room is gonna be an office. So I'm pretty excited to set that up and um, we will keep you posted on, on how that turns out. Uh, but having a distinct place to work is not something I've ever had before. So that's, that's exciting. Um, and then in general, I just hope to kind of reflect and organize uh, various things in the house. Like we've been, we've been on this kick where basically we get rid of one box of stuff um, every week. And this goes back to just not buying gadgets and whatnot. Like I actually gave away a bunch of white elephant gifts over the holidays that were stuff I had bought that were great deals, but I didn't use. And so I guess it worked as a white elephant gift, but I've just kind of realized that I don't know why I'm, am I buying stuff out of boredom? Am I buying stuff because I have a desire to like replace things I didn't have as a kid, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. But I want to think more about that and be more um, intentional about the stuff that we have in the house. And especially if I, when I think about like the space where I work um, and stuff like that, like how are things contributing to, you know, me producing work? And one of the big things that I currently have is I've got a library of about 1,500 uh, books. And I have not read, you know, even 70% of, or no, back, I've got that backwards. I have not read even 20% of those books. Like I went through a kick where I was so excited to have space to have a library. And then something I really enjoy is, you know, searching thrift stores for used books. Um, I've even at different times sold books online and whatnot. But now I have all these books. And so every time I look at these books, it's like, oh, I should be reading a book every week. And even if I did read a book every week, like how would I finish all these books that I have? <laughs> you know, and so what does that library represent in my mind? And is it dragging me down or is it uh, like an opportunity to be had? Um, so that's something I'm thinking about in 2019 as well and what I want to do with all that stuff. So anyway, um, those are some goals. I'm it'll be really interesting to listen to this and hopefully I'm not just repeating myself again when we get into 2020 because <laughs> that's one thing I, you know, I say that at work, like I hate repeating the same mistakes over and over again. That's the one thing that frustrates me um, about working for a state agency is sometimes I feel like we do that and that's the one thing I definitely don't want to be doing in my personal life and author business because if you're repeating the same mistake over and over again, you know, what's the common denominator? Uh, for me, it's probably me. So uh, I'll be giving that some thoughts. Anyway, uh, goals for next week, uh, continue the current streak. We've started, I wanna continue with it. Um, I've got another 20,000 words to write on Lunar Crisis, uh, which is the new name of the, of the novel. Uh, we'll see if that one sticks. Um, but if I can get there, I will be in a very good place as far as finishing this book. So um, I will continue plugging away. I'll be drafting a newsletter that will go out next Sunday. Um, and then I may also record an hour of uh, my, the novella, Crash in Love. And I'm going to experiment with a uh, audiobook, or not an audiobook, but a podcast uh, like service that cleans up audio. It's called Alphonic, and I'll put a link in the uh, in the show notes. I'm actually going to try it with this podcast and see how it does. But supposedly, it kind of automatically does all the levels and whatnot for you. And um, I don't know. I'm curious to check that out and see if that's something that can potentially be used for audiobooks because that is one of my worries with producing audiobooks is that I'm just not capable or have the technical skills to make it sound as good as it needs to. You know, it's one thing to do a podcast. Um, it's something else to do an audiobook. So I'll be playing with that and some different other services. I, I recently subscribed to the uh, podcasting subreddit on Reddit and there's been a lot of great info in there. Um, there's so much you know, blog spam out there about podcasts that it's hard to find good information. And so that was kind of refreshing to find that, uh, that community. I'll share the link to that as well. So anyway, that's everything for this week. I hope you have a great writing week. Thanks for listening. Again, this has been James Aaron. Um, the podcast is speculative work and I wish you happy writing until then. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.